What's up guys, Gamer the Video Game Scientist from VG Bootcamp here, and I think I might have broke Pyra. Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to Smash University. They make really, really awesome Smash tutorials in really high quality, really good production value. They only have like 7, 8,000 subscribers right now and they put up really good content, so go consider subscribing to them. I'll put a link in the description, make sure and go check them out. Pyra's Blazy End is a really good move. It does 20% bare minimum damage and maxes out close to 30% if you get all the hits. It covers a ton of grounded and airborne space with a completely active hitbox, both during the short and long versions. Due to ultimate's lack of movement options, it's very easy to get clipped by it because you can't immediately shield out of dash. And obviously you can't shield in the air either. So basically it catches a ton of short hop and grounded approaches. The downfall to this move is that Pyra can't do any attacks during it, only movement and defensive options. And when it's over, the sword comes back to her and she catches it, giving her about 14 frames of extra lag. We've already figured out how to cancel those 14 frames though by shield dropping and a couple other animations. To make up for these downfalls, the community has discovered ways to get follow-ups out of Footstool. The last hit of Blazing Rod has about 12 frames of hit stop, so footstooling it is really easy to pull off as your opponent is frozen in one place for so long. So what you do is you footstool and air dodge down. The sword comes back to you though while you're in air dodge landing lag, and adds to your lag, making it so you only have enough time to jab. If they don't tech, you get a jab lock setup, which is decent, but if they tech in place, you only get a jab. And if they tech roll, you don't get anything unless you hard read it. And even if you do, you don't get much. It doesn't work on all characters either. The main issue with this setup is that it's super telegraphed. At high level, most players are just gonna scope it out and choose a tech in place to take the jab or just tech roll away. That's where my setup comes in. I don't know if I'm the first person to discover this, but I personally haven't seen anybody else talking about it. If you catch somebody close up with blazing end, so it puts them airborne, or you just catch them out of the air, and this causes them to end up under a platform, you can do the following. Run over, Fool hop, footstool during the beginning of that last hit, and then air dodge down. Against most of the cast, the landing lag for air dodge down will end right before the sword starts coming back to her. So you drop through the platform, and for some reason that platform drop animation cancels her sword catch animation. This puts you right above your opponent and gives you way more frame advantage than the standard setup. Against most of the cast, you can do the following, and it will catch both no tech and tech in place. Fast fall fair, nair. Fast fall up B, back air, which can also cover tech roll in, and fast fall jab if you just want to go for the normal jab lock setup. And obviously this is also dependent on how your opponent drifts out of the footstool. The biggest and most important thing you can do out of this setup though is down air. It hits no tech. Tech? Tech in if you time it perfectly. And on tech rolls, you're about plus five, meaning you can pressure with forward tilt, which leads to set play. Forward tilt is actually another insanely good move and I'm actually working on a video for it right now. So make sure and subscribe and turn on those notifications. All right, let's get back to down air on no tech and tech in place. At low mid percents, you can combo out of it. At mid percents, it knocks up, leading to combos. 
The thing is, at higher percents, there's a platform in the way, so they can just tech on top of it and your up smash won't combo. Oh wait, you have so much time for this. An up smash's hitbox is so massive and active that you can center yourself onto the platform, charge the up smash a bit, and release about 12 frames after they land on it. And this covers tech in place, no tech, tech in, and tech away. That's every option. And if you don't get this in the center of the platform, you can just dash in, up smash, and you'll still have time to cover everything. Now obviously your opponent can DI the down air, so in certain circumstances, they can get away from the platform so they don't have to land on top of it. But you can still set up frame traps if they do that. Another cool thing about this setup on Battlefield at least, is that if you get it on the side of the platform that's facing the ledge, you'll sometimes catch no tech, tech in place, and tech roll towards the ledge. By the way, it might just seem like tech rolling is the best option, but if that is hard red, it can be punished with fast fall forward smash. One pretty cool setup on Battlefield, by the way, is to do it while you're on ledge and they're trying to ledge trap you. This is just really good and really viable, and I tested it on a bunch of good characters, and the only characters it doesn't seem to work on are super fast followers like Fox, Wolf, and Falco, some big bodies like Donkey Kong, and for all the good characters I tested on, it doesn't seem to work on Joker or Min Min. Another awesome thing about this is that it seems to work on PS2, Yoshi's, Lilat, and Smashville, even though all the platforms are slightly different. But on those stages, I didn't test with a bunch of characters, so there might be some slight variance. And honestly, I think this is really good on Smashville. You'll have way more opportunities to set this up in neutral because the platform is center stage. Funny gimmick, on Kalos, if you somehow catch them at the edge of the platform, if you do fall through down air, you'll actually catch many characters if they mash double jump. Again, I just think this is really good. Um, I think it's gonna be a big part of her play as a character. Um, obviously Mithra is still a way better character than Pyra, but I'm just finding all this really cool stuff with the character and she's really fun to laugh. That's the video. If you liked it, consider giving it a like. If you really liked it, consider subscribing. And if you really, really liked it, consider turning on those notifications. I'm busy, I got things to do, so it's back to the lab with me. See you guys next time. to the lab.